You're listening to In My Humble Opinion with Maxilia Robinson and Charles Lewis only on 101.3 Jams. 101 Jams, your home for today's in classics hip hop and R&B, home of Cheryl Underwood Radio, and you know who we are. Miss Max, I am HO 101 right. Jams on the social media. And uh we have a great great hour already going on if y'all didn't miss that ask max uh you know that, that was a pretty um pretty uh fever pitch discussion there because uh you know because we all have our have, have our have our beliefs and when you start talking about it, it gets pretty deep so that segment ran a little long but i'm glad that miss fatima man stayed online for us and i uh, waited it out with us uh, she is here right now to chat a little more with us um and glad y'all stay tuned please call us up with your questions and comments or hit us online here uh because this is a young lady uh, who I had the pleasure to meet at the Congressional Black Caucus in D.C. not long ago. She was up there representing um, herself and her organization, and really there um, talking about the resources that are needed in the urban community and that she's helping to bring there, particularly in these times of disasters that we're facing. Ms. Fatima, man, how are you today? I'm amazing. How are you doing? I'm, I'm blessed. We are blessed. Thanks for joining Max and I on In My Humble Opinion uh, here in Charlottesville, Virginia. And, um, and I, I know I didn't really do you any justice with that introduction. So please let the people know your background and uh, who you're associated with, the great work you're doing. Uh, thank you. Um, first, I just appreciate having the opportunity to come uh, and be on the show. And so thank you for having thank me. You. Uh, and thank you for doing what you all do. Um, well, like you said, my name is uh, Fatima Man. I am um, 30 years old. I am a law student, first at Southern University Law Center in Baton Rouge um, in, in Louisiana. Um, I am the co-founder of Counterbalance uh, ATX, which is uh, with Christina Brown um, in Austin, Texas, which is an organization we created to con- combat systems and not people um, mm. from a uh, perspective unapologetically of women who have, uh, are of African descent. So mm. as um, someone who identifies as black and of African descent and unapologetically a black woman, um, mm. we lead from that perspective by making sure that there are, um, that we're represented in pop. Uh, self-care programming and services in the heart of communities so instead of asking our communities to come to resources we connect um, people to the resources Uh, we put on summits Um, we actually have one coming up called the women of the global majority summit Um, that's what we call uh, we call people of the global majority it's what we replace um people of color with uh we're not mm. people of color we're actually people of the global majority there's more people that look like us than don't mm. um and so, you know, um, I'm really big on reframing words and, and restating words. So um, if, if Eurocentric individuals can make up words and professions, then why can't we? So um, uh, we, we've been around, um, we've been incorporated for a year uh, in December, and um, we do... We do a lot, and we do a lot by working with a lot of organizations that we're not recreating the will, but we just do it, like I said, um, strictly from the perspective of women, um, and especially women who are of African descent, period. Um, We don't talk enough about how black women are treated in this country and abroad, and then then you just talk about women in general, how we're treated. Um, There's not enough conversations that are intentional um, about making sure that we're at tables and, and that, you know, our needs are met first because we're the backbones and doormats of society. So um, with Counterbalance came um, the opportunity to, well, I'm, I'm going to back up. I'm a really big spiritual person. I, you know, spiritual meaning that I, that's just all encompassing for most people, but I believe in something greater than myself. People call that thing God, universe, Allah, Buddha. But I know that there's something divine that guides me and everybody. I just tap into the divinity a little bit more than most. Um, And I asked God what I was supposed to do in regards to Harvey. Um, I was 18 years old when Hurricane Katrina happened. I remember watching the TV crying. I was a freshman in college. I was boohooing because I was like, what am I going to do? Right? And And I didn't do anything. I just cried. 12 years later, I had the opportunity to um, birth a concept called Community Restoration Projects in which we sought out to put people in the bids and not cots um, and then send supplies 
So we what we set out to do, we did um, in this. Um, so we put people in beds and not cots. We, we put over 40 families. Um, we pay for hotel rooms, transportation, um, all through donations. Um, Mm. and fundraising we uh collected over three thousand pounds of supplies in which we distributed um in the communities of of port arthur beaumont uh the fifth ward in houston and baytown yeah. um and then um we also facilitated we also facilitated the rescuing of over 400 people um in houston so um you know bought a canoe and some vests and some other supplies and sent one of my amazing friends out because she was going so i you know i was like hey what do you need and how can i help mm. and we were able to create our own channel on the app that was used so there's little app was the app that was uh, people were being used to um, facilitate rescuing. Uh, there was there's a whole lot of black and brown women who were on um, that that actual radio app and were working as dispatchers. Um, we counterbalance was uh, the organization that had its own channel on on Zillow app, so we were actually able to work with other um, beings to facilitate the rescuing. So um, we we did everything that, like I said, we, we wanted to do. We got supplies to people mm -hmm. that needed them. We put people in beds and not cots, um, and then we made sure that we connected them to the other resources like FEMA, um, SNAP, and all those other benefits. Yeah. And now, Fatima, let me let me stop you there. Pause you there um, to to elaborate a bit. So 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 our listeners can picture um you know the the part that uh that that you all really played meaning that uh when it comes to fema and red cross and um you know some of the flack that they get about uh certain demographics uh really not being served and um and and, and not not getting the help the resources donated may not even reach certain areas so 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 break it down you know the part that you all played and uh in the demographic uh you know that that you know that, that you all were, were helping in and uh you know in, in contrast Sure. So, um, like I said, I'm unapologetically black. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So I unapologetically seek to aid people in communities that look like myself um, and represent the communities that I am associated with. So um, we went to neighborhoods um, that are majority black um, and African descent, black and brown specifically. And we made sure that they had what they needed, um, whether it was being rescued, um, getting supplies literally into their hoods, mm. or um, bringing them back to Austin. Um, we created, a, we set up what's called the Community Restoration Site, which was a which is a one stop shop for um, people to retrieve the the resources that they need. So I always like to say that I am. I'm the product of all the black women in my life. Uh, my mom, my grandmother, my aunts, all of them. And um, and all of the women, really, but definitely the black women. You go to a black, an old black woman's house, or any, I think any black woman these days, the first <laughs> thing they're going to ask you is, is if you're hungry, right? So yeah, they yeah. want to feed you. So the first thing that we did was we fed people. We fed people real food, not preservative-based food, yeah. not you know GMO food. Gave them real hot meals. Um, we then allowed them to, you know, just like if your grandma realized you lost everything, she's going to tell you to go back into that room where she has extra stuff of everything and pick mm. out what you need because you need it. So we had rooms set up in which people could walk around and retrieve what they needed because they lost everything, everything from diapers to hygiene products to clothes. Um, also on this in on the same site, we had FEMA come and aid in signing people up for their FEMA, along with a sanctuary. So we worked with, um, we're actually still working with Wildflower Church on Otorf. Um, they allowed us to utilize our sanctuary in the beginning to house uh, acupuncture and massage and energy work because uh, healing needs to happen if you're going to restore your community and, you know, Peace of mind is something that a lot of people don't cherish and understand is needed, right. especially when losing everything. Um, Red Cross and FEMA don't create sites um, close to this. Um, mm. Since Harvey and and I can tell you, you know, I've, I've also went to the islands. We can talk about that too. But like, they tend to not have supplies when they show up. Um, they tend to believe that being in a shelter where you're sleeping on cots and are under these illuminated lights. Um, is is the stop? That's where they should stop um, in regards of supplying people with things. And I tell and I told you know someone from 
Democratic cause. And FEMA, I, I let them know. I said, you know, your job doesn't end because you rescued somebody. Right. I mean, these are still people. So there's other things. And so what we do is we focus on the other things and not just the rescuing and making sure people are alive. Mm. Hello, Fatima. How you doing? It's Razor. I'm amazing. How are you? I'm doing good. I got a, I got two questions for you. One, have you had any backlash for creating this type of thing? Because... You know, like Black Lives Matter got labeled a terrorist group. And since you're focusing solely on, well, not solely, but primarily on African-American sisters, have you had any backlash from there? And the second part of the question is, I heard some of the things that you said you were taking the women to, like SNAP and, you know, just different services that help them. How, let me see, how can I ask this? How does, how can we help? the african-american sisters without also putting the african-american man in a bind because once the way the government works once they give these services they go after somebody else to pay for them so how do you find that balance in between the two uh, those are really awesome questions so i guess let me um first clarify is that we don't only serve you know um women of African descent. We focus on black and brown women specifically, but we definitely put a focus on African American women. Um, we and, and their communities, right? So to be absolutely honest, the black woman is, you know, everyone comes from a womb. So once we mm. can acknowledge that everyone comes from a womb, then we can acknowledge that the womb is the center of the universe and should be respected as such, yeah. but it's not. Um, and so it's, me, it's just being more intentional about saying that black women need to be spoken of first and acknowledged first, but they're not the only, but if we don't know if the black woman is good and everybody's good because everybody relies on a black woman in some way, everybody, um, especially in the United States. So for mm -hmm. us, it was literally saying that we, we helped everybody. Um, and, but we, and on our site, you know, black women come first so in terms of getting supplies black women got supplies first um even when i was distributing supplies you know in the islands it was the women who got supplies women children and elderly get served first um because that's just how the village life is and that's just what we forget and i, and I think in regards to the governmental assistance a lot of these individuals were already on the government assistance yeah. and so it was just allowing them to to read like to re-get what they already have but the purpose for community restoration project is really um the to, to redo right so god the universe mother nature whatever climate control climate change whatever you want to call it has literally wiped out a lot of different spaces places people and things so this is an opportunity for us to build our communities and restore our communities from the ways in which they should be and not from the ways in which mm. they are but creating an interim in between so saying yes i want to you're going to have these governmental like you know resources because they're immediate and right now and you need it right now but we're also going to, you know, pour into this community, like how to, you know, eat properly and how to budget and how to become entrepreneurs and trauma focused therapy and, you know, the th you know how to grow your own food and the importance of food health. So it's yeah. a holistic opportunity and 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 experience. It's not just we rescued you, we 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 gave you real food and buy, um, but understanding that this this concept. Um, was literally birthed on the day Harvey happened, and it came into fruition maybe three to five days after. So there wasn't a let's sit at a table and figure this out. It was you asked God for a vision. Here's a vision. Go, <laughs> and, and, and I've been going ever since. All right, and, and Fatima, um, we're gonna we're gonna take a break quick, and then we're gonna get back to you. And, and Max is, I'm sure, gonna want to dig a little deeper into some of the resources for our Black females, and uh, we'll talk about the next steps, some insights you may have on Puerto Rico and whatnot. Classics in today's hip hop and R&B drums are powered by, by Air Mix Virginia. Let's get it. Get lit to this. As 101 Jam, WBAI, Charlottesville. Online 24-7 at 101JAMZ.com This is 101.3 JAMZ JAMZ uh, I had asked her how exactly do we do I understand us focusing on our black women and putting them first and leave and as a woman and as a mother myself leaving out the, the white women and the white children that also need the help so Fatima could you could you wrap that, que that answer up for us 
Um, yes. So it's just I was just saying that it's important for us to realize that um, black women, um, if, if we put our intention on making sure that they're taken care of, it doesn't take away from anyone else getting help. It doesn't take away from anyone else getting what they need. It just means that, you know, black women won't be left out as mm. like, per usual. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And that and that's the point. The point is that we're not left out and that we have spaces where we can um, be ourselves and not worry about what people think our actions or words mean. Mm -hmm. but just us being us and that being okay and that's there's not a lot of places um that do that and so we wanted to create that space and that's just what we do but mm -hmm. everybody gets help all the time but mm -hmm. black women um are, are the ones that we intentionally make sure that we go and get and, and take care of because if we don't then they won't be taken care of mm -hmm. at all okay i have to say that as i was listening to the focus of your initiative um i could draw parallels to the bible because it talks about taking care of the least of these as far as women and children and and things like that um i guess my next question is for you is what is your hope of um, you said you call it restoring the black woman and probably in some cases building the black woman. What do you think we can accomplish so that we we're you know, we're look we're we're viewed in society as we should be. And then we are we're not setting the table, but we are we're not preparing the table, but we're setting at the table. Mm. So that starts with women understanding their power and their capacity, right? So this is all women, not just black women. We don't understand the powers in which our womb wields, right? Like, you know, it's it's an honor to have a womb. It's an honor to be a woman. It's an honor to be able to be able to, you know, have the body that says you should be able to give life. Whether you choose to or not isn't the point. It's the, the ability that all you were built to, to take care of and preserve life. That is what women were built to do. That's why we are always thinking of the entire person um, because we have to our bodies are built to take care of another being that is going to be baking and, and becoming another human um, mm -hmm. we don't understand the power in that we live in a society that, that has said that that is weak it is weak to have ovaries it is weak mm -hmm. um, to, 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 to be a woman not understanding that you know it's, it's not easy and there's strength in it so mm -hmm. that question to me starts with us realizing who we actually are and that we are without of the woman there'd be no man and not saying that we are greater than a man but being able to say that we have to see ourselves as if if, if a man doesn't do what we want the them to do then we need to be able to say so this is what you're not going to get this is what i'm not going to do for you mm -hmm. this is not and, and being able to take our power back and understanding that there is power in being excuse us. me for team Yes, I sir. think I speak for men all over America <laughs> where we do understand the power of the womb. <laughs> I assure you down here in Virginia, we understand the power of the womb. You understand the, the, the pleasure of the power oh, of the womb. Oh, no, no. I understand the pain of the womb. So, but, you it, know. From everything from um, they might eat hot dogs that night to child support. I trust you. We understand the power of the womb. So the other thing I want to ask you is the other yeah. the the so other element. I think starting from there, I think that and then black women being not not afraid to um, have their own lane and us support each other. I think that we don't support each other enough as black women. So I can't start talking about other people without talking about home first. And home is women. We don't we don't make sure that we we are good as as women. We don't check on each other enough. Um, mm. We don't adore each other because we realize the men are not going to adore us. So we might as well adore each other if we see each other working hard or we're making sure that each other eat and drink water. Like these are all things that have to start with us. And then being able to say once we realize how amazing and brilliant and incredible we are and that we don't have to look like what Eurocentric society says, we don't mm -hmm. have to act like that, then we would be we would be restored. But it takes it's a process like everything and it's it's planting seeds for, for all women, but for real for real, because I am a black woman, for mm -hmm. us to understand that we we are more than what we know, we've been led to believe that we are mm -hmm. and it's okay to be great. <laughs> And amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. I, I was going to ask you about how we support each other instead of being in competition and go. tearing each other down. But uh, so I appreciate your your answer, and I hope that our listeners were paying attention to yeah. that. Is he already on the same page? Mm -hmm. And Fatima, while Razor was providing a bit of comic relief, I definitely want to also speak for the men and saying that some of us love uh, a, a empowered 
strong, beautiful woman. And of course, some of us are intimidated by that. Um, but if if men do step up and start complimenting our women and and taking care of protecting our women like we should, then of course things will be so much better. But I salute women like my co-host Max and yourself who who are supporting each other and who are strong black women even even in the times where where some my brothers and myself sometimes fall short so definitely applaud you for that but my call as a black man would be for all of our men to step up to the plate to ease that burden but love the work you're doing that is so true thank you for that because it's annoying um depressing it's depleting to be a black woman and always and always using the word literally always fighting for you know the rights and benefits of black men and you know as soon as something happens or go down for a black woman we're all we're looking around like where are y'all mm-hmm. and it's it's not standing beside us right so there has to be some real conversations about what black men can do to support black women and not just how beautiful we are because we know we're beautiful thank you but like you know making sure we're fed and making sure you know our feet are rough, making sure that you ask us how mm-hmm. we're really doing and not like you know all the things that objectify us and make us feel like we're nothing more mm-hmm. than something that can be you know you know mm-hmm. you know you're a man right <laughs> so, like, just, so being able to say like there's there, there has to be a shift in how we treat each other and mm-hmm. someone told me this one thing I, actually it was on the island because i went to st thomas and she said we should love our lovers like if you, you know her boyfriend her lover she loves like her brother and i didn't get it like you know i didn't understand mm-hmm. what she meant but then yeah. i understood how me and my brother are and right, we're like right. one person right when we come together and we're in one room my brother is legitimately the man and i'm the woman and but we, 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 we blend together to be this one brain, this mm-hmm. one person, this one collective, mm-hmm. because we're brother and sister. So we, we bounce off each other, right? Gotcha. Um, yeah. and, and, that's, and I think that's how we were created to do, for sure. But Fatima, before we before we let you go, can you please uh, uh, let us know and our listeners know um, ways that we can continue to support those still in need, whether it be over in the islands, things you've seen there, um, or whether it's here in the States, Florida, Texas, what have you. Um, please let us know how to support your efforts and help our communities. Awesome. So um, you can, on Facebook and Instagram, it's Community Restoration Project. That's the org- that's the grassroots organization that is aiding and facilitating um, getting supplies, donations, and volunteers to um areas in Texas and then Puerto Rico, St. Thomas, and St. Croix. Um, we, I, I went to those three islands and identified two cities in each island um, that are suffering and are not are without electricity and mm. need aid, and the only aid that they are getting is community-based aid. Right. Um, uh, so being able to have different cities and different places um, fundraise, and then for that money um, and those supplies to go directly to these six cities um, are, is, is my goal is to make sure that they have all the things that they need as well as hands and brains to aid them in um, rebuilding because things are destroyed so Puerto Rico is bad um, people are only hearing about Puerto Rico but they're the, the, the islands that are 80% plus of African descent are are uh, they're not doing as well because they're not even receiving any aid um, mm. when I was there they were receiving none that was governmental based and the wow. aid that they were receiving that was government based was literally killing people because island food um, doesn't consist of preservatives and GMOs, but um, all the farms and like the rainforests and things had been wiped clean by the by the hurricane, so people like legitimately don't have fresh things to eat. So um, Community Restoration Project has all the information in terms of how to donate. Um, we have a PayPal set up and all of the proceeds go directly to the different organizations. We're splitting them up into six, like to the all the six cities. Um, and we're working with anybody and everybody who wants to um, help us adopt these cities so that they have mm. all the things that they need. Awesome, awesome. Now, and, and, what, and what is that contact information? What's that site for people if they want to um, donate through your means? It's Community Restoration Project. Okay. Um, and it's Community Restoration for PayPal. Um, and the email is communityrestoration1 at gmail. Got you. Got you. There you have it. Sister Fatima Mann, the unapologetically black woman. Strong sister. Thank you for joining us on In My Humble Opinion and, and, and uh, shedding so much light with us today. And please don't be a stranger. Keep us posted as what you have going on. I appreciate you all having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a good day.